If you've been on the channel for a while, you know that I am a part-time comedian, and so I always try to bring you a little bit of humor here. U.S. regulator opens inquiry into Wall Street's blank check IPO frenzy. Well, that's right. They're going to investigate what's happening here because they want to make sure that you are taken care of. That's right. The same group of people that made sure that there was the housing crisis and the bubble that led up to it. That group of people who made sure that all the rating agencies were rating garbage, absolute garbage, AAA, and are still doing so today, by the way, AAA ratings, yeah, that group of people, they're going to make sure that this whole blank check IPO frenzy doesn't get out of hand. We trust them, don't we? Things just keep getting worse for hedge funds as long bets sour. I thought it was interesting just to see the global year-to-date total alpha, long appreciation, short appreciation, just trying to compare 2021, that's the yellow line right here. And what they noted was that these hedge funds typically go for what, you know, these momentum trades. But in 2021, things have kind of been moving up and down, up and down. So as soon as the momentum gets going, well, then it turns around. And you've seen even the big names in tech stocks haven't been able to really find their way higher and higher as they were previously. Now that certainly might be taken care of by a little bit more quantitative easing, a little bit more stimulus, the infrastructure package, but the infrastructure package, which we'll talk about in just a second, and the value stocks, which we've now seen more of a rotation into value today, this could start to see a big change in the way that hedge funds do business. So they're not able to necessarily ride off of this momentum trade. They're going to be going into the value stocks and we'll see, of course, what happens. I'll bring you more information on it as time progresses. And that brings me to this. The majority of Americans think that the market is rigged. We asked to what extent do you agree or disagree with the following statement? Quote, the stock market is rigged against individual investors. This comes out of bankrate.com. And I wanted to note here that you've got approximately 20% that strongly agree. And you've got somewhere between 29 and 35% that somewhat agree. Okay. And then you see on the right-hand side, somewhat disagree and strongly disagree, a very small group of people are suggesting that. And we know that. We already know. And why? Because people, quite frankly, they're, being ti- they're tired of being taken advantage of. And we've seen that. Now, that doesn't mean that these people are not investing. I'm sure they've got a 401k, an RRSP, a super that they have. So they are technically investing in some way. But when you see what happens, people, they often don't get to see the benefits of all that quantitative easing. And I think that that's where this frustration comes from. Now, finally, I got to the big article for me anyway. When we talk about the Federal Reserve and what they do, um, to me, it, it excites me. I mean, people, they love to watch sports. Other people, they love to watch sitcoms and soap operas and so on. I love to anything coming out of the Federal Reserve is, you know, it, it's, it's fantastic to me because it's, it's, there's so many levels to it. I mean, the criminality is unbelievable. It's it's like watching the mafia go in or, or, or a foreign country takes over yours and they just co- continue on. Business as usual, everyone. Business as usual. Shut up and keep your head down. The Federal Reserve has come a long way from the days of warning about irrational exuberance. You remember that, right? It took three years for the warning from the maestro to come true, but the statement is still considered a seminal moment in market history where a Fed leader issued such a bold warning that went unheeded. And hey, what happened after that? Disastrous, so disastrous, people still haven't recovered in some cases. Flash forward 25 years and the attitude from the Fed is considerably different, even though market evaluation look a lot like they did back around that time during the dot-com bubble. Isn't that funny? Isn't that funny the way that we see it today? Please, Federal Reserve, please do more. Buy this, buy that, buy all of the toxic assets, buy everything and pump it all up because we need you. We need your help. We need really, really low interest rates because this market can't survive without you. Check it out. You got the San Francisco Fed president saying, quote, and this is a quote, we won't preemptively be taking away the punch bowl. 
I mean, can you believe it? And if you scroll down even further, the punch bowl metaphor was interesting. In that term, became a bit of a pejorative following the 2008 financial crisis. And they're really talking about right here, back in 1951 to 1970, you had the longest running Fed chairman saying that the Fed's role, let me let me pull out the highlighter, was was to act as a chaperone who has ordered the punch bowl removed just when the party was really warming up. That's right. That's right. That's the way it's supposed to be if they're going to be there. But instead, they are the complete opposite today. And if this was me, and if I was somebody who was overly invested and over leveraged, I'd be very concerned. I would not be celebrating the actions of the Federal Reserve. People keep saying, I keep seeing it all the time. I keep seeing the articles, I see the comments, I see it, everything saying, why would you want them to increase interest rates? Why would you want them to actually see a crash in the market? But people don't don't really see the way that guys like Templeton did, people like Buffett do, where they are seeing, I could simply wait around and make a heck of a lot more money buying just small things here and there, but going all in when the time is right, when the time is right. Buffett himself said the worst time to buy a stock is when it's going up. Now, he's been buying, as you know. But if you look at it at a deeper level, you start to realize the way that they act. They're willing to wait as long as the cycle takes because they know that when the time comes, they're going to make real money. Take a look at this. Shrink in times, holding period of stocks in years. This continues to decline as more and more people move out and out and out of all of that. You know that people are not doing what they used to before. People today, they are hoping that the government will be them be there to support them. San Francisco to give $1,000 a month to artists in basic income program. This whole universal basic income is really spreading around and I'm just not sure where it's going to be funded from. That's the question I have. Biden wants the this basically this China's Belt and Road project that they have going. They want something that will surpass that. And you know, with all of this, certainly I'll say it. I'll be the first to say it. Doing infrastructure is better than printing money and buying mortgage-backed securities. There's no doubt about it. But what we are seeing today is something that, you know, okay, as a business, and the government should work in some ways, some ways, like a business, where you have to acknowledge where you're going to get the best bang for your buck. If you just throw money out there, you're obviously going to see waste, but if you get, you know, focus on the things that get the best bang for the buck, that's how you turn an economy around fastest. That's how you turn a business around fastest. You cut the dead weight and you work on the things that get you the best ROI or the best bang for your buck, depending on exactly what you're looking for. That's probably not the case right now. And, um, you know, unfortunately, in, in what we're seeing here, this right here, vehicle mileage tax could be on the table in the infrastructure talk. So we're going to see what happens with all of that i i just don't know how any of this is going to benefit the you know the grand scheme of things the end of the quarter could create volatility for the markets in the week ahead one of the reasons i uh, wanted to mention this to you was at the bottom you see strategists expect to see a continued push and pull of the market rotation that favors cyclicals over growth and tech so that's just kind of uh, concluding what we were talking about a few minutes ago and people should be aware of that if they're just putting all their money into tech stocks you know you've got to be careful when you your portfolio is not diversified okay and then this is one thing that if you stayed to the end of the video you got the juicy details there's a couple things I want to mention here. Number one, you should know about this. Masks and hand sanitizer are, are write-offs on your taxes, okay, according to the IRS. So if you're in the U.S., you can utilize that information as you see fit. There's another thing. Who benefits when there are write-offs in this case here? Well, you can see it as the consumer. If you're buying these things, then you, know, you get your write-off. But the companies that make these products are suddenly going to see people buying as much as they want. Maybe before they would only buy whatever it is, one bottle of the thing. Now it's a tax write-off. I'll buy 10 bottles. 
So the, the demand can increase dramatically. So look at the companies that could benefit from this. And all I'm going to say is that suddenly people are going to have a lot more money for these products. Okay. I hope that, you know, people are asking for more investment advice and things. I can't give direct advice, but I'm looking at this and I'm seeing something that could definitely benefit some people. That's all for this video. If you found it informative, hit that thumbs up button. When you do, you're supporting me. I want to thank you for that.